Hello everyone and welcome back to my second video on Star Drive. So when we last left off, I believe we went over all the technology stuff that I'll be teching here in the near future. And we were moving on to greater and better things. So, um, why don't we go ahead and talk about the planet? Because we'll be looking at this quite a bit. So, um, let's see what to say about it. We have a fairly standard interface here in the center, and we acquire buildings through uh, different technologies. We'll be able to put them down and they will be built and then they'll do stuff. Um, this is also kind of a overview map for when you get into ground combat because uh, people will take up certain squares and stuff. Um, right now we have two buildings on there. It's a spaceport which allows us to what build ships and increases our tax income by 50 percent. But It has a maintenance cost as well. And the other big thing is our capital city, which provides research for us, which is pretty cool. Um, then over here, we have some information about the planet. Uh, it's Terran, population is 14 to 14, fertility is 1.5, I guess out of two, because we took the penalty, or it would have been two, but we took the penalty. So ours is 1.5, which is fine. Uh, we don't grow food. Richness is two. Um, I believe how it calculates is for every one citizen working in production, it it, uh, it counts as two production. So um, we don't get full amount because our production is being eaten by the, our people. Um, still, I don't really know if that's a benefit. I, in some cases, it will be when we land on planets that you know you can't grow stuff on, but you can produce on. Um, so I guess it's I guess it's okay. We'll kind of see how that works out. Um, they seem to eat a lot of production because we should have what twenty eight production, but we're at twelve point three. So that's kind of a kind of something we need to pay attention to, I guess. Um, so our two sliders that we be, we will be working with is of course our production slider and our research slider. See, so yeah, well, it looks like our people are eating one production per population, so. Eh, okay, it's not bad. Um, so that's what these sliders are for. Pretty basic stuff, nothing too complicated. Um, below it we have what's called storage. Um, so we have food storage and we have production storage, or I guess production storage. Now, they're kind of interesting. Um, of course we won't see our food production go up, but our, our, uh, our, we won't see our food storage go up or down, but we will see our production storage go up and down. And it's a little bit interesting. Um, and I'll, I'll explain how it works. If you're building something, like let's say we're gonna build this, uh, I have a few different ships here I've loaded in from previous games. So when you start up this game, you won't have things like Ninja Bomber or Warp Colony ships or jump transports. Um, I think those are the only things I have in here. Yeah, for now. Uh, these are some ships I designed myself. I'll explain why. Uh, when I get to it but um so let's say we want to build this scout now how this is gonna work is each time I guess the turn ends or updates you know every half year whatever production we have over here so 7.1 we'll make it a easier number seven seven production will then be transferred over to the scout and then in the next half year seven more and so on and so forth so if you're constantly building stuff, you don't really add to your production storage because it's all being used. Um, however, if you have production going and nothing in production, so if we're not building a scout, but we let the game run like this where we're accumulating seven production, then it's put into storage. Um, there's a few other exceptions to this, a few other rules. Um, so right now we have it to set to import store uh, import production, but we can have it set to to export. And if it's set to export, then 25% of this will go directly into the uh, the storage. 
which is kind of cool. Um, you can have it to store, which is, you know, basically don't import or export, I guess. I think that's what it really means. Yep. So we're going to set it to, we'll just leave it as import. It doesn't matter. Um, but we need to build a few ships. We need to explore what's around us. So we're going to build some scouts here. So you can see they take 16 hot production. I'm going to start calling them hammers because they look like hammers. So it takes 16 hammers to build a scout. We're going to go ahead and build uh, quite a few of them. Now, when the scouts are built, we're going to need, um, we're going to start building some other things as well. So we're going to build transports, and we're going to build the ones I made. So these are jump transports. Um, I call them that because they travel a lot faster when they are jumping rather than when they're just kind of motorboating around um, with their you know, outside of warp, I guess. So these ships warp really fast, or they warp faster than what the default uh, transport is. So we're gonna build a couple of them. They will be used to hull production around. Um, and I think that's it for now. Now, the other thing is, is yeah, we have production sitting here, but how do you use it? Um, well, how you use it is in other games, you you know you can rush units, and it costs you money. Well, in this game, not only does it cost you money, but you also need to have production sitting here or hammers sitting here. So it'll take the hammers, and it will put them over here. So you can rush and it, it explains it to you actually right here which is pretty cool um, so single click will apply 10 production 10 hammers um, from storage to the current production you can control click and it'll put as much as possible uh, likewise it'll also cost you I believe one gold or one coin as well uh, says so it can be what reduced uh, or eliminated through various technology technological means which is pretty cool I look forward to that so um, that is the thing um, so right now we're going to produce quite a bit I'm not gonna worry too much about technology and we're going to go ahead and try to get these scouts out and get them going um, so there's there's of course of course you can select the scouts and just kind of send them out if you want to so like I can select the scout and just right click if I wanted to, but um, this game feels more of like one of those games where you want to take a back roll, kind of let the AI do a lot of stuff. So if you right click on a ship, you'll get these kind of menus, and you can assume control the ships and kind of fly them around a little bit. I haven't gotten too much into that, and I think I'll wait until I have more sturdy ships to do that. Um, I'm hoping that when I do it, it'll feel like I'm playing Spaz, but we'll find out. Anyways. So we're going to go to orders here, and pretty basic, defend empire or go exploring. We want to go exploring, so go ahead and unpause the game. And here we have a colony ship who's just going to float around here. So um, he's going to jump off and go explore for me. So um, go ahead and pause here. I also want to colonize this planet, so there's a couple ways of doing that. You can just you know right click on, on your colony ship here. And send them over um, or another way to do it is if you select the planet and hit colonize it'll mark it and then send a colony ship over I believe if you do not have a colony ship it will queue one up on a planet build it and then send it so we're gonna do that here for a bit and just kind of send stuff out we're gonna get all this stuff produced and uh, then we will kind of switch it off of that off of production and set it more to tech so so now we have a uh, colony here that's been built and it can't really do that much as we see we don't have very many people um, though it's a pretty it's okay in its richness 1.8 is not bad um, it doesn't have very many slots though but yeah, it can be worked with. So um, we're not going to be able to do anything right now. But what we want to do is is we want to import stuff, and we are going to export from here. So when our trade ships get built up, they will 
um, export stuff, production, hammers, over to there, which is great. And likewise, we're going to set a governor, and we're going to set it to industrial. Most of our stuff is going to be set to industrial, since that is our bonuses, and we will be playing off of it. Um, the main reason I have it set there is because if you leave it on manual, and you get new techs for, like, you know, buildings and stuff, and you don't come and place it, then um, your, your plants will sit there. And if you get, you know, you, the more and more plants you have, the more in pain it will be to manage it. So I, I find setting governors it helps out a lot. Again, it's really taking the approach of being the leader. You're not so much the guy who's going to go to every single planet and be like, hey, we need to build this building and we need to build there. You're going to be the guy who's going to say, make your planet industrial. And I, I feel that's kind of the focus of how this game is going so far with how you're supposed to deal with with this real-time strategy, but yet still have to kind of place everything else. I, I don't know if it's going to be changed. I hope there'll be more hotkeys and more menus to kind of ease this up if you really wanted to do it manually, so you wouldn't have to pause so much and do it. So, anyways, let me adjust here real quick. Sorry, I hit my cord. My mic cord. Anyways. Um, for now, we are going to go ahead and put it on an industrial. This will, uh, of course, make choices to build it into an industrial um, planet. Um, likewise, I've also found that the AI will have no problems taking the hammer out of storage and rushing out its own buildings, which is cool. I like that. I think that's a good idea. So, Anyways, we will carry on. And we can actually rush some of the stuff out, so we're not waiting too long on it. Um, it's not a big necessity right now, but kind of want to do that so we can shift things over to tech. Now we want to start teching up so that we can, of course, get more technology. Now, um, with transports, we want to do the same thing, give them an order, and transport goods. And all you need to do. Pretty simple. Now you can transport people around, but like I said, I don't think it's working right now. I've tried using it before and it doesn't seem like uh, anything much happens. So Now unfortunately these guys are really, really fast in warp, but not so much out of it. So they'll be kind of slow. Now we've scouted a few planets as well, uh, so we could take a look at them. We're essentially looking for plants with good population and good production. Um, 1.2 is not that great. So I wouldn't really say anything in here is that great, though this planet is really rich. And I would hope that in the future we might be able to increase that. I'm not too sure. Um, what do we have going on here? That's a really good planet we have there. It's a pretty, pretty damn good one. We have anything impressive over here? No, not really. It all looks like kind of crap for now. So, so some of our transports will ride. I believe these ones will haul 15 around. And we can kind of just sit here for a bit while our people explore. So this one had an anomaly going on at it. And I would like to colonize that, but uh, I think part of the anomaly was there's also enemies there. So we're going to have to clear those enemies out um, before we can do anything about it. See, kind of going back to the cybernetics thing, like this planet would be really good for growing stuff, and you would still be able to get some production out of it. But I think for the most part, we would get like nothing out of it. I mean, essentially our production would be 0.2 because each citizen would eat one production. So I don't know if cybernetics is really a benefit, but it does make it so we only have to manage two sliders. Um, so I mean, that's pretty good. And of course we get other production bonuses to get that up and it won't be as bad and oh my god that is a good planet we are taking that right now and 
crush. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this up to about there. So I have some excess production being made. And man, that's a good planet. That is going to be way better than my home world. That is my new home world. <laughs> so that's a pretty good planet. So these three, these exclamation points, what is that, three? Yeah. That is telling me there's hostiles there. This swirly thing tells me there's an anomaly. And it's not at that planet I want, so. And there's some stuff going on over here. I'm not too concerned about it right now, though. Heavy drones. They're not too bad. Once we get missile theory and we get some missiles, we'll do a lot more combat. But for the for the time being, we kind of want to uh, um, avoid it. Also, another note I want to add. I do have colony ships that are supposed to move really fast in warp. Um, unfortunately, it seems when you tell your people to colonize something, it wants to do the default colony ship, which kind of sucks. So I'm not too sure if there's a way to do anything about that or not. But um, yeah, that's the thing that I think should be addressed. Also, this is a ship they give me at the beginning of the game, and I have it under my control so I can like spin it and shit, but I don't know. I don't like what the fuck I'm supposed to do with it. I guess it's a fighter and I can fight with it. But like, I don't know how to uncontrol it. And it seems to just drift off. So, oh great. Hyperspace flux. So, fucking everyone's stuck in hyperspace. Which I guess is okay. But since everyone's stuck, we'll go ahead and... and this is our empire screen. Kind of shows us, shows us an overview of stuff. But we'll go ahead and uh, not starve my people. But I guess there's nothing to do. Kind of get this done and out of the way. And get some tech going. And I guess we shall play the waiting game. As I sit here ever so patiently. Waiting for this hyperspace flux to go away. It's kind of a shame. Surprise one hit so early. Um, anyways, our stuff is done so we can get uh, rovers. Oops. And I'm going to place this down, I guess, there and the warehouse there. That'll be good. And we need to build it, so we'll shift some over to production. And that will kind of get it going. We'll bomb our tech down here for a bit while we do it. And right there. And the other planet should be doing it kind of by itself. Yeah, it already put up its rover base. I said, fuck that, we're going to use our stuff. And you know what, that is not a bad idea. Though it seems kind of... We are to spin production to get production, and most of the shit's already built anyways. <laughs> so everything I just said in the last five seconds was fucking useless. Shift this back over, and continue researching. And the hyperspace flux is gone? It is gone! Yay! So, um, this planet has gotten a warehouse on it, so its storage has increased by 100. So that's cool. Um, I don't know if I will want a spaceport here. I don't know how much taxes I'll actually be getting from these guys. I'm not actually quite sure how taxes work. I know that sounds weird, but it's true. They seem to kind of just jump around for whatever reason. Like sometimes I'll say 7.2 and then it will just jump something different. I don't know. Anyways, it seems we have made uh, first contact with our first alien race, and they are the race of Bulbasaurs. Pokemans in space. Uh, no, but they are plant people, and I guess they communicate or they do something with the panel around them. Anyways. Cloudy weather, traveler. We are the Publis, and we play for you a song of greetings. And you can ask some questions. And 
I really like what the developers did with this game. There's always one question in here that is probably on everyone's mind when you first look at them, and that is, what is that device you're manipulating? Oh, this? This is our sonoboard, of course. Every time I play a note, it releases a powerful blast of synthesized sunlight. It's good for us, but perhaps not so much for you. Anyways, um, there's not too much I want to do with him, so we're going to say goodbye. And on an annoying note, I believe his color is the same as mine, which it is, which is annoying. Um, <laughs> I think his color should change since I have taken it, essentially, but I, maybe his is a little bit darker and mine's brighter. I don't know. Also, yeah. That's not a bad planet he has. That's not a bad planet either. He's uh, I guess that's his home world, and he's got a large home world, so he has more population on it. So, it's not bad. Um, I haven't found that the AI is anything all that interesting, and I'm fairly sure it cheats. Maybe. Um, by cheating, I want to say that because um, when I research technologies, sometimes the AI just shows up instantly, and it's like, hey! Hey, give me what you have right away. I want it. So I don't know if the AI is supposed to know what I have or not. Because I don't think I can tell what he has. Like, I'm not too sure what to, how to tell what he has. Anyways, this uh, brings up another interesting thing. In that uh, we have agents in espionage. So we're going to go ahead and buy a few agents here. And I don't see. I don't necessarily know how much I need, or how effective they are, or anything. But uh, I mean, I guess we'll go ahead and train them. And I think when they just hang out here, they uh, they're pretty much like on defense and stuff. So we'll go ahead and leave them there and let them do that. Um, I I think our. Our colony ship is still going there. Okay. I was wondering where it was at. Now, now there's a, another thing that I need to bring up, which is subspace projectors. And I'm not really too sure how they work. I'm, I haven't really found a very good explanation on it. So I'm going to build one. And I think it's building a transport ship. So I think the transport ship maybe has to go over and build it. And then I think I need to build another one. I've never, I haven't gotten these to work yet, but I think I need to build another one down at the other planet and then point them at each other. And then it makes, these planets are kind of close, but I think they have it there. It should make a, uh, like a line sort of. So I think that's something to do, but I don't know. Like I said, I'm kind of going off experience of just hitting new game and, and praying for the best, but I don't know. Well, there's our missile theory, so that's done. And that leads us into ships. And I guess we can go ahead and rush that shit, um, which will give us... So when you research missile theory, it's going to give you type 1 rocket. Um... And then, so, but what I did is I, I took the engines off and put warp engines on. So that's why I have warp rockets here. Um, essentially, I did that because they already move at an okay rate since they're fighters. But they're more of like a rapid response unit. So like these guys, can, these warp rockets can hang out at my home planet here. And then if something gets attacked, like they'll get there really fast. And you'll see how fast they are so kind of if you see a scout flying around here kind of look at how fast the scout flies um they don't have i don't have any warp engines on my scouts oh we have another race we have found um so this is the thing on behalf of the darlock council we do greet you and that is really creepy we do greet you we look forward to the game we might play course we can discuss and ask them why they're using holograms 
Why are you using holograms? What? You could see that? Blasted hollow chair is always on the fritz. Anyways, this is our lady race, I, I guess. Um, maybe they're necromancers. I don't know. It's our lady race of giant boobies. Always have to have a giant booby race. And of course, if it is a race led by females, they must have purple skin. So, that is the rules of the space uh, genre games. So, carrying on. Um, so, again, there's not anything I'm really going to do with these races. I would like to blow them all up. Baha! But, uh... Um, so yeah, ow! Oh. See, this is what I'm talking about. I don't know how he knows I have Missile Theory. I see, I don't know if he's done like an espionage role against me with a spy and found out. Maybe somebody could, could, uh, allude to this. I think the AI just knows. Like, I think they just know your technology. And they're gonna just be like, so it's kind of like, I guess it's like civilization where you can kind of know what other people have. So they're just like, hey, how about you give us missile theory? And we're going to go, no, research it yourself, douche. And then he's going to get angry at me. Arr! And I'm going to end this conversation because I don't give a shit about him. Um, you can colonize that planet any day you want. That would be a cool thing. Looks like I have a lot of transports kind of going there. Um, I don't think... Game. Okay. I don't think I need to import anything for now. So we'll just go ahead and put this on store. And population is growing, but very slowly. So... Something we have to worry about. And that projector thing is done. Now, I don't know... Like, what I'm really supposed to do with this? I mean, I can tell it to defend my empire or go exploring. So, I don't know what the hell that's all about. I'm going to build another one down here and hope maybe it does something. Like, maybe it makes, like, a lane and you can, they, like, fast travel along it, I'm thinking. But, like I said, I have no idea. The game's not going to tell me. I don't think. Space projector. Tell me. What do you do? Hold no. Okay. Wow. Well, it's a... I mean, unless you, fi unless you find out that the B key opens this build menu, you I mean, you wouldn't even know you had it. So, I played a couple games. Um, you know, just like the early game and stuff, and I <laughs> never realized I had it, so. And I guess we can go ahead and rush this out. But, uh, we need to start producing more again so that we can export some of it out. And uh, so our guys were done training, our agents, and it looks like uh, I think one of them died. No, he failed to learn anything. So these guys learned stuff, and uh, this guy did not. Maybe we can send him back to training, yeah. I guess I can train them even more. And apparently I can't give them any of this other stuff. I'm running out of money, though, so I need to pay attention to that. Um, it says I'm getting plus nine. I don't know where all my money is going. I'll have a breakdown, so. But uh, I'm assuming it's going to all this uh, rushing I am doing. Which I need to pay attention to. And I think down here we will go ahead and set this as industrial. Oops, industrial. And they want to build rover, which is fine. You do whatever you want. And okay, I don't think there was like anything else around here I wanted to colonize either. Everything's kind of. Oh, you want missile theory too. I don't think so. And her anger goes up. I kind of like this over here. I think it's pretty cool. Kind of tells you their deposition towards you. I'm not too sure. Um, yeah, okay. I guess there was these tooltips I'd never noticed. That's cool. 
Okay. I'm guessing anger. She's angry at me. She's going to attack me. Okay. Okay. Cool. We will see how the AI uh, reacts as we go down in time here. And there's nothing great there. And samurai bears. In the springs, in the spring rains, pond and river become one, bloodied by our foes. Heed well our warrior poets, Volfar, and anger not the mighty Korathi. I do not know if they are descendants of the Borathi. Um, but they are animal races, <laughs> and they are scary looking. So. Um, and of course we can ask the obvious question here, it is so obvious, sword and uh, bears, anyways. How do you hold that sword without any thumbs? Mm -hmm. What? What are thumbs? Some Korathi hold weapons in each paw and one in their jaws as well. Pray you never meet our berserkers on the field of battle. <laughs> anyways, like every other race we have a uh, kind of... Uh, interacted with so far. I don't wish to really do anything with them, so we'll go ahead and, and leave. But I think I've been recording here for a while, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording, and I will see you guys in the next video, um, where I'll hopefully get some warp rockets out, and maybe we'll go around and shoot up some AI and see how they react to it. But I'll, I seem to have quite a bit of space here um, until I hit them, which is pretty cool. So I have a lot of planets to explore, a lot of systems to explore, and hopefully some plants to pick up. So anyways, um, I'm Hosen, and thank you for joining me, and I am signing out. I will see you guys later.